afternoon. I hope you all are still awake and vibrant. I'm going to try not to bore you with ACDBE certification facts. So I only have nine slides, and I just want you to know that's the shortest PowerPoint I've ever had for certification. Okay, so I'm going to try and stretch it here. Basically, what our organization does, we're the North Central Texas Regional Certification Agency. We provide the certification services for the North Central Texas area for MBE, WBE, DBE, and ACDBE. Today, I'm going to speak to you specifically about ACDBE, since that's how you have to be classified if you plan to be a concessionaire here in the airport. Okay? Now, we don't fill out the application for you. We don't tell you how to put your company together to get certified. We basically educate and counsel you through this process of certification. Our services are free. Consultations with us are free. To come sit in the office and just have a cup of coffee is free. So anytime you have questions about certification, please give us a call, and we will be more than happy to help you through that process. Now, an ACDBE is a firm which is 51% owned and controlled by one or more individuals who are both socially and economically disadvantaged. The two key words there are socially and economically, okay? Social disadvantage speaks to you being either a woman or a minority, and there are several minority classifications that we look at. You have black Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, Asian Pacific Americans, subcontinent Asian Americans, or other minorities that are found to be disadvantaged by the SBA. The economic disadvantage speaks to the owners whose ownership percentage is being relied upon to apply for the certification, so those 51% owners, their personal net worth, and it cannot exceed $750,000. That excludes the applicant firm and your permanent resident, along with half of the marital assets. Now, for the ACDBE program, there is a personal net worth statement that you have to fill out. And on the next couple of slides, I'm going to get to some of the exclusions that are allowed if you apply for ACDBE certification. Now, the size standards for ACDBEs, um, April 3rd, 2009, there was a new, new rule that was passed. It raised the three-year average gross receipts to $52.47 million. The following um, specific companies, car rentals, have a size standard of $69.97 million. Banks and financial institutions have a $1 billion in assets threshold. Pay telephones, 1,500 employees, and automobile dealers, 350 employees. So these are some of the size standards that differ from that top rule. Now, the personal net worth statement. For this certification, it does require that you provide both the company and your personal tax returns. For the ACDBE certification, we're going to need your personal taxes for the past three years, along with W-2s of both the majority owner and spouses. In addition to that, if that 51% owner owns 51% in any other company, they have to include that on their personal net worth statement. Now, there is a $3 million exclusion that is specific to ACDBE applicants only. That excludes the finances that an applicant demonstrates are necessary to obtain encumbered or encumbered to enter or expand businesses. These are going to be personal assets or contingent liabilities. Now, the exclusion has to be real and it has to be present. So you cannot exclude something that is going to be used in the future for you to either start up or renovate your particular uh, concession. Now, additional documents. When you submit your application for certification, there's going to be a list of information. We're going to ask for hair samples, blood samples, your firstborn. All of that stuff, we do. But in addition to those documents that you have to send in for the regular DBE certification, as an ACDBE, you will also have to provide us with concession contracts or other contracts that your firm has received. And if you have not received any contracts, then we want to know what types of work your concession prefers to operate. Because we have to make sure that if you say you're going to go into the airport and you're going to be a news and gift stand, then we want to make sure that you know, you're going to provide that specific service. We're not going to certify you for news and gift stands and you come into the airport and you know, you're selling cookies and, and bagels and things like that. So we have to substantiate and verify what your primary product or service is going to be. 
Now the certification process takes about 60 to 90 days from the date that the application is received complete. That is a very key word, complete. So if you send your application in and it's not complete, that 60 to 90 day processing time does not begin. When we get your application, we're going to perform an initial review on it to make sure that everything is there that's necessary to do a final review. If there's anything that we're missing, you're going to get an email from us that's going to identify the documents that you need to submit in order to make your application complete. If it's complete when we get it, then you're going to get a lovely email that's going to say, congratulations, here's your affidavit number. It's going to be 60 to 90 days from this date. Okay? So the key is to get it incomplete. That's why I stress, please come and see us if you have any questions regarding the application of the documents that you need to send in. Now, along with that personal net worth statement, we're going to contact client references that are going to verify that you are who you say you are, you're doing what you say that you do. And we're also going to conduct a site visit. That is a requirement of the Federal Register that we do a site visit on all certified DBEs and ACDBEs. We will come out to the primary place of business, and we will also visit you at your concession. Okay. Now, the benefits of certification. Yes, you're going to be put in a database that's viewable by all of our NCTRCA members. Okay? In addition to our database, we're going to upload your information to TxDOT. TxDOT, if you look at the fourth or third bullet, is one of the consortium members of the Texas Unified Certification Program. They house the database for the entire state of Texas of all certified DBEs and ACDBEs. So your information will also be listed there. Okay. Um, in addition to being certified as an ACDBE, you get the opportunities to contract with the Federal Transportation Authorities, not only with the airport here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but you could also go to Houston, you could go to Austin, anywhere there's an airport and it requires you to be a certified ACDBE and do business without having to go through that certification process again. Okay. And it is a marketing tool. Again, it's not going to be a guarantee that you're going to get a contract in the mail after you get your certificate in the mail. So you still have to go out and market your business and do all the things you would have done if you never were certified. Okay. And here is our contact information. I said it was quick, nine slides, that's it. Do I have any questions about ACDBE certification? Yes. Yes, if you're certified as a DBE or an ACDBE in your home state, there is a streamlined process that you can go through with any other state. They'll basically ask you to fill out their application for their particular state. You'll send them a copy of your certification. They're going to ask us for a copy of your site visit. And then if there have been any changes, they're going to ask you for documentation to support those changes. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. For the certification for DB and ACDBE, we're interested in the 51% ownership that you have in any other firms. So mm -hmm. If you own 20% of another firm, you would not count that. We would only be looking at 51% ownership that you have in any other companies. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll have to look at it, but that's, that's the rule that stands right now. Yes. Well, once you're certified, you're going to have an annual renewal. So you'll come in each year just to let us know if there haven't been any major changes. If at any time during your certification anything changes, you need to notify us as soon as possible. That includes contact information. It includes you providing additional services from what you were originally certified in. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay, she had nine slides and was very quick. I only have one slide and I'm going to be even faster because a lot of the information in which I'll be sharing with you today is already on our website. 
Um, at the next meeting, we'll probably have a lot more meat. For me to go through my presentation, it's really just kind of regurgitating everything that you've already heard. And I really want to make, you, make sure that you guys have enough time so you can start your speed dating. So uh, check our website. It'll be posted. And every fourth Tuesday of the month, we'll have more updates. And the next meeting is going to be about requests for proposal writing. And we'll probably have a lot more details as it relates to the types of categories that we're going to be looking for in the upcoming RFP in August. So without further ado, I'm going to have Mr. Michael Baldwin share with you everything you need to know about speed dating. And I'm going to quickly zap through these slides as he is coming up. See, I told you you guys saw.